Genital herpes, caused by the herpes simplex virus, HSV, has been known about for a long time, but it was not always distinguished from other conditions. HSV was first isolated in 1943. However, the distinction between HSV-1, commonly associated with oral herpes, and HSV-2, commonly associated with genital herpes, was made in the 1960s. Before this, herpes infections were not differentiated between oral and genital types. The realization that HSV-2 was predominantly responsible for genital herpes helped in understanding and managing the condition more effectively. Genital herpes simplex infection, primarily caused by herpes simplex virus type 2, HSV-2, and to a lesser extent by herpes simplex virus type 1, HSV-1, typically follows a distinct route from transmission to chronic management. The virus is mainly transmitted through sexual contact, including vaginal, anal, and oral sex. This transmission can occur even when the infected individual shows no visible symptoms, due to asymptomatic viral shedding. Once transmitted, the virus enters the body through the skin or mucous membranes, often in the genital or oral areas. The primary infection may present with symptoms like blisters and sores in the genital area, pain during urination, itching, fever, and swollen lymph nodes. However, it's not uncommon for many individuals to experience no noticeable symptoms and remain unaware of their infection. After the initial infection, the virus replicates and spreads to nearby nerve tissues. It then travels to the dorsal root ganglia, clusters of nerve tissue near the spinal cord, where it enters a latent state. In this inactive phase, the virus remains present in the body but does not cause any symptoms. The virus can be reactivated due to various triggers, such as stress, illness, or immune suppression, leading to recurrent episodes or outbreaks. These recurrences are generally milder than the primary infection. Importantly, even when there are no symptoms, individuals with genital herpes can still shed the virus, posing a risk of transmission to others. Genital herpes is a chronic condition with no cure, meaning the virus remains in the body for life. However, its impact can be managed effectively with antiviral medications. These treatments can reduce or prevent symptoms, decrease the frequency of outbreaks, and lower the risk of transmission. Given its nature, managing genital herpes involves not only medical treatment but also a focus on safe sex practices and open communication with sexual partners. This approach is crucial in managing the condition and preventing its spread, particularly given the potential serious consequences in specific situations like pregnancy or for individuals with weakened immune systems. Genital herpes a common sexually transmitted infection primarily caused by the herpes simplex virus types 1 and 2, HSV-1 and HSV-2, manifests through a range of symptoms that can vary greatly among individuals. In some cases, people with genital herpes may experience mild symptoms or none at all, which can lead to unawareness of the infection. The hallmark symptom of genital herpes is the development of small, painful blisters or sores on the genital area which can also appear on the buttocks, thighs, or anal region. These blisters are often accompanied by pain, itching, or a burning sensation in the affected area. When the blisters burst, they leave tender ulcers or sores that typically heal over several weeks. In addition to these localized symptoms, the initial outbreak of genital herpes can be characterized by flu-like symptoms, including fever, body aches, and swollen lymph nodes. This first episode is usually more severe than subsequent recurrences and can last 2-4 weeks. For women, genital herpes may also present with pain or a burning sensation during urination and unusual vaginal discharge. Although less common, some individuals might experience headaches, back pain, or a general feeling of being unwell. Despite the presence of these symptoms, it's important to note that genital herpes can still be transmitted to sexual partners even when no visible symptoms are present. Due to the variability and potential mildness of symptoms, the only definitive way to diagnose genital herpes is through medical consultation, which may involve a physical examination and laboratory tests. Given the diverse nature of its symptoms and the possibility of asymptomatic transmission, Anyone who suspects they might have genital herpes or has been exposed to it should seek medical attention for accurate diagnosis and appropriate management. The treatment of genital herpes, caused by the herpes simplex virus, 
primarily aims at managing symptoms and reducing the frequency of outbreaks, since there is no cure for the virus itself. The primary approach to treatment involves antiviral medications such as acyclovir, valacyclovir, and famcyclovir. These medications are effective in reducing the severity and duration of symptoms during an outbreak. When used as part of a suppressive therapy regimen, taken regularly, they can also decrease the frequency of outbreaks and lower the risk of virus transmission. In addition to oral medications, topical antiviral creams may sometimes be prescribed. However, they tend to be less effective than their oral counterparts. Over-the-counter pain relievers like ibuprofen or acetaminophen can also be used for pain relief and to manage fever associated with outbreaks. Home care plays a vital role in managing genital herpes. Keeping the affected area clean and dry, wearing loose-fitting clothing, and taking warm, slightly salty baths can provide symptom relief. Lifestyle adjustments, such as reducing stress and maintaining overall health, are beneficial as stress can trigger outbreaks. For individuals experiencing frequent outbreaks, daily suppressive therapy with antiviral medication can significantly reduce the likelihood of recurrent episodes and asymptomatic viral shedding. It's particularly important for pregnant women with genital herpes to discuss their condition with their healthcare provider, as the virus can be transmitted to the baby during childbirth. In these cases, a tailored treatment plan is essential to protect the baby. Practicing safe sex, including the use of condoms, and avoiding sexual contact during outbreaks are critical to reduce the risk of transmitting genital herpes to sexual partners. Open communication with partners about the condition is also essential. Lastly, the emotional impact of a genital herpes diagnosis should not be overlooked. Counseling or support groups can be beneficial for individuals seeking psychological support to cope with the condition. It's crucial for individuals with genital herpes to consult a healthcare provider for a personalized treatment plan. Early treatment, especially during the initial outbreak, can improve the effectiveness of these therapies.